I ain't gonna lie, it feels good to be back, guys. Thank y'all so much for the warm welcome on the last video, reintroducing myself into the reaction world. Today, we're gonna be reacting to Dr. Bob SCP-280 Eyes in the Dark. Now, I'm doing this a little bit differently. I'm gonna use my green screen with myself in the bottom left corner to take up a little bit less screen real estate, and also so I don't have to do as much editing. Now, it's gonna be using the YouTube viewer, so you guys can comment to say if you like the old style better, the new style better. I actually might pause a little bit to react to certain specific parts, but I'm not gonna try to overdo it. I just had a couple of people request that I do try to change things up, so I'm gonna try it out. You guys can let me know how you feel in the comments. We're gonna play by ear again, okay? Anyway, SCP-280, Dr. Bob, make sure to subscribe to him, Dr. Bob. Subscribe to me if you like reaction videos, and let's get into this one, you guys. The old house has been abandoned for going on two decades. All right. And as with any place that's been left uninhabited for this long, rumors tend to spiral. It's a pretty creepy house. Of course, there are the more mundane explanations for why the two-story, four-bedroom home on the end of a nice street lays in semi-ruin. Black uh, mold, the economy? asbestos, <laughs> rising house prices. <laughs> just, just, but those yeah, weren't exactly. the stories that most people told. Of course. Everyone in the neighborhood knew what really happened. All really? those years ago, the family that lived there had been murdered. Oh, the, the Amateville. was never caught. Okay. The three young paranormal so investigators <laughs> with EMF readers in their hands and GoPro cameras mounted uh, on their targets know all ghost about this. They approached the house in the dead of night mumbling commentary for the recordings of course if the old house really is as haunted as everyone says it is then they could be in for something really good here y'all know my view i've never always do this. loved brand new paranormal content well yeah they use a crowbar Watching to it, breach though. the front door and head inside Quite it's everything you can expect from a house that had been abandoned for 17 years y'all record Dust, that cobwebs <laughs> and graffiti abound the police Broken go bottles get you scattered across the floor sure Someone squatters scrawled, and stuff welcome to hell Wow. The door and faded Sharpie. It all plays perfectly for the cameras. <laughs> okay, Paranormal I'm leaving. content I'm leaving. gold. All mm -hmm. of them turn on their flashlights, generously provided to them by one of their sponsors, of course. Hey, but in hey, this particular yeah, situation, sponsor, they have no idea just how valuable their product really is. Uh -huh. After all, there are some frightening things that hide in the dark. Yeah. The leader of the trio begins ascending the stairs narrating into his helmet cam giving the more popular version of the house's legend getting some evps and stuff <laughs> torn apart literally by a killer hiding in their home right oh the family hiding. had all been brutally murdered by someone in their home but the police never found any sign of unlawful entrance or exit because there's no an scp to the killer's presence whatsoever in fact. or the devil it was as if they were a ghost a both a vapor it was almost as though whoever killed the family had always been in that Look house the blood and even God, after the murders dang. were committed they never left the place either. Right. As he tells the story, the lead investigator starts to feel a little nervous. Even though he himself doesn't really believe in the supernatural, okay. he just plays up reactions for the views. Sure. He still can't help but wonder. I, I, I really tend to do that sometimes too. Am I making a terrible mistake? Is there a chance that whatever did this all those years ago could still be in the house waiting? Of course. For him? Yeah. But he pushes those thoughts from his mind. This gig is too valuable for him to wimp out now. And right. really, what are the chances that something actually dangerous would be lurking in the house? The other two investigators <laughs> are still looking <laughs> around downstairs, sticking together, their flashlight beams slicing through the darkness. Their boss always insists on going upstairs first. He demands the glory shot, after all. Oh, that leaves the rest of them searching the downstairs it, uh, living room, brave dining for the room, fame. Kitchen, okay. where the best they can hope for is maybe a particularly haunted-looking dishwasher. It's why the younger of the two is so surprised huh? when they suddenly feel something happening to their body that they've never experienced before. Uh-oh. In an instant, their whole body convulses with an involuntary shudder. They feel the temperature drop, and the world gets just that little bit darker. It's a ghost. The best way they can describe the feeling is impending doom. Like any moment oh, now, something my God. is going to happen. I've had experiences of that kind of feeling of dread in very very specific cases like i almost drowned before okay uh, i was in a spillway and i was like caught in the um the undertow and one of my friends got me out naturally i'm still alive but for a minute there i had that feeling and i gotta tell you guys it is it, it's it's terrible you never ever 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 want to feel that it's real too it's almost like psychologically somewhere in your brain it knows that you're gonna die unless something happens it's it's almost like you start accepting it it's it's weird anyway but almost as soon as the feeling begins it's gone 
intensity dropping. Okay. Dread starting to dissipate. Good. As though whoever or whatever caused this feeling literally passed right through. Like them. when I got the hands Their on me for my rescue. Asks them if they're okay. Of course, they nod. Yeah, and force a smile. yeah, yeah everything's fine. fine. It's just a spooky place, is all. Atmosphere right. like this would get to anyone. Meanwhile, the lead investigator is exactly where he wants to be, ascending a rickety stepladder up into the attic. The very same attic where, all those years ago, the police had found what was left of the family. Oh, that's and where the evil is hiding. The their remains weren't a pretty sight, even by true crime enthusiast but there's standards. Blood all he over the, the walls and shines stuff, his flashlight not. around, capturing all the dusty old boxes left to rot in the cold. He's engrossed in the macabre spectacle of what had once been the worst and final moments of a group of strangers' very Sorry, real lives. <laughs> the attic is full of spider webs and shadows. Sure. They're so ubiquitous that as the lead investigator pauses to tell his camera the next chapter of the grisly tale, he doesn't even notice one of the shadows the shadow. peeling off of the wall behind him. It wafts silently towards him like a gust of midnight air. Wafts? Little like... by little, the blob <laughs> of shadow starts word. to take on a vaguely human shape. It leans forward in the investigator's direction, arms extended like a classic movie monster. Long, dark claws slide out of its shadow. About to get hands. ripped. Downstairs, the other two investigators hear the most terrible scream. For a moment, the more fantastical thought crosses their Eviscerated. mind. Eviscerate. Could this be one of the tormented souls of the departed family, longing to be heard after years of no. silence? <laughs> then it occurs to them that they recognize the scream. <laughs> That's your boy. to their boss. The two of them charge up the stairs, flashlights in hand, as the screaming starts to become more desperate than pain, like that of a wounded animal with its leg caught oh in a Oh my god. Those terrible wails are echoing down from the open hatch leading into the- The voice actor put his own point. Something must have broken his flashlight. That's when they notice something else. Red, dripping from the open hatch. Uh-uh. For a moment, Bye. they hesitate, wondering what could be going on <laughs> I'm gonna just call the police and could let them really tell me what happened. Or would they just be running into the danger themselves? But soon, their desire to save their boss's life overpowers their fear. They grab Ripped the ladder and start climbing, feeling the dripping blood on the worn wooden rungs. Oh. When they finally get up into the attic, it feels like the scream is coming from everywhere, bouncing off the walls in a terrible, echoing cacophony of pain. They turn in all directions, they can't even covering see the flashlight beams around the room in wide, sweeping arcs, until both fall on the source of all this terror. And when they shadow, shoot, they can't help but scream too. The lead investigator's body is floating oh. about a foot off the ground, his screams now fading into pained gurgles. Something huge and dark is lifting him up with one hand, oh. and sinking the long, dark claws of its other into his neck. Oh the my second God. the twin flashlight beams concentrate on the creature, it drops the lead investigator's bleeding body down onto the ground. It's, it's done, though. His skin slate gray, his feeble twitching slowing to a halt as the last of his life drains from him. Oh my God. Two glowing red pinpricks open up in the face of the Bah! <laughs> Eyes like terrible, burning coals etching themselves into Run, the be running. Like smoke, it continues to glide backwards further, seeking refuge in the dark. Oh, the light. Even amongst the other the light is scared. By this point, the two surviving investigators know there's nothing they can do for their boss anymore. Yeah, All no. All left is to get out <laughs> and survive. Just get out. They have to save themselves. Jump down the ladder. They turn, wasting no Run. time running towards the exit. They don't know. Better hold that flashlight the behind you. They turn the beams of their flashlights away. The shadow's terrible eyes disappear, uh -huh. and it starts advancing towards them again. Correct. You better, you better shine it. Stretched and grasping for them with awful fury. The shadow creature grabs at their heads as they make their final leap Ooh. for the exit. However, all the monster can pull away are the See, that's why you wear a hat, yo. As they that's why I wear a hat. And then down the stairs, really running at speeds excuse. they didn't even think possible as the shadow slithers down behind them. It doesn't Ugh. give up. It wants their lives. It wants their warm human blood on its claws. They clear the threshold of the accursed house and keep running to their car. Oh, One Mr. So much. Their shoulder and sees the shadow <laughs> That's so the good. House, gaining on them. Both claws oh, he came out the house too. To rend their flesh. The two climb into their car. In the car. They see the shadow coming towards their window. It's moving so quickly. High Only beams. Few feet away now. It's getting closer. Hit it with the high beams. Closer and closer. Ignition. The car starts up. Interior and the light too. The pedal down. LEDs. Off, quickly accelerating Home up to flashlight a everything. As the shadow continues to <laughs> chase, slowly getting smaller and smaller in the rearview mirror. A distant nightmare. A terrible, dark ghost. Gah. As it finally disappears, they feel a moment of safety. Yeah. But really, only a moment. Because it occurs to them then that they cannot say with any confidence that this monster won't just be waiting for them when they get home. Right. SCP-280, also known as Eyes in the Dark, 
is one of the more frightening and dangerous anomalies contained by the SCP. The animation and narration is so good, causing an XK class end of the world scenario anytime soon. But if you happen to run into this nocturnal monster, it's likely to cause an end of you scenario and remove you from the world with extreme prejudice. There's no way of telling just how many lives were claimed before the SCP Foundation finally got it into containment. And perhaps it's mm. best to just not think about that. So it is contained. SCP-280 is a black wraith-like apparition that floats at roughly wraith. average human height with no visible legs or feet as the lower portion of its body simply fades away before it reaches the ground. Right. In its dormant state, the entity may appear to be little more than a shadow, easily dismissed, especially in dark environments. This comes as a natural result of the being's frightening ability to become intangible at will and only become physical when it enters a state of active aggression toward a human target. Wow. In this intangible state, victims have even been known to walk through the shadowy mass by accident. That's the While impending doom. While this doesn't doom. lead to any detrimental physical effects, victims report mm. that being inside the creature can lead to heightened states of anxiety, fear, and dread. Despite its body being wholly composed of an unidentifiable black matter, when exposed to light, the creature does begin to express a pair of glowing dots on its head similar to eyes, hence right. its frightening nickname. However, eyes all in the tests dark. indicate that these eyes aren't actually functional. Instead, okay. they appear to be a kind of defensive measure, like false eyes on the carapace of an insect. These eyes ah. are never shown when SCP-280 is advancing towards a victim, That's interesting. only when it is in retreat, though this is only one of the entity's several defensive responses. If an area where the creature is residing becomes fully illuminated or a sudden flash of extremely bright light is it directed teleport. against it, then it will immediately dematerialize and appear in a different area. The one positive thing that can be said about the hunting patterns of SCP-280 is that they're relatively predictable. Okay. The entity, it seems, only has an interest in human beings. When it selects a target, it will Good. pursue them relentlessly, so you approaching in its safe. intangible form and with its cats. arms extended in what many describe as a sleepwalker pose. Uh, in this state, creepy. you may finally notice 280's claws, long, thin, and razor sharp. Right. It may silently approach while the victim is turned the other way, or while they sleep soundly in bed. No noise, no they're paralyzed just... in fear at the very sight of it. When SCP-280 closes the distance, it will begin to rip and tear at its victims with its claws, causing massive physical trauma <laughs> and, in some cases, is so death. Else, dude. Attacks range from one to five Jesus. minutes of being relentlessly clawed at by the beast. Oh when the attack is over, God. it will simply expose its eyes, become intangible once more, and escape. You will not be able to overpower the creature. Foundation tests have shown that it has extreme physical strength, and okay. it's capable of tearing apart solid steel when it's corporeal. with little effort. Wow. If it can't find any humans to victimize, then it will simply remain dormant, pressing itself up against a wall, in a dark corner, so then or within eat, some other structure. Nut just kills. Which is why, if ever you feel nervous about a certain dark corner in a room near you, <laughs> it is best to remove yourself from the situation as quickly as possible <laughs> <Yeah>. and remain <laughs> in a brightly lit area. It would perhaps be comforting scared, to no believe words. that SCP-280 is acting on some twisted form of animal instinct. After mm. all, while the results may seem horrific to us, every organism has to eat, right? But that's well, what sadly, I was thinking. that isn't the case here. It don't eat. SCP-280 does not appear to eat, sleep, or breathe to survive. Mm -hmm. and it never consumes any of the matter torn from its victims. Crazy. The best working theory is that the entity simply enjoys the harm it causes, taking a degree of perverse pleasure in hunting down and murdering yeah. its targets. There is no better nature to appeal to here. The SCP uh, Foundation's ability to study the creature's biology sure. has also been stunted, in part due to the creature's highly aggressive nature, sure. and also the fact that its selective intangibility makes gaining physical samples almost impossible. Right. So Even how capturing and containing the creature right. in the first place came partially out of blind. Luck. That's what I want to know. How it first how came to Foundation attention it? after a series of mysterious locked door murders in a small Mississippi township. Right. Mississippi. In the most case, Man, it's right next door to me. Brutally murdered in their home, leaving only one survivor. A traumatized nine-year-old boy named David, who'd locked himself in the basement when he started to hear the screaming. He was Poor so thing. terrified by the things he saw that night that he remained in a catatonic state for weeks afterwards, guess. completely unresponsive to outside stimulus. But one little detail saved his life. A flashlight was clasped in his white Thank knuckle grip, huh? shining a bright beam of cold, white light onwards. When David was removed and placed into medical care, Officers began searching the building for any kind of clues as to how the other four family members were murdered. Right. However, during this investigation, the police were just as vulnerable as the victims who'd been so recently mm -hmm. slain. While one officer was wandering around the attic, looking for any evidence they may have missed, 
SCP-280 emerged from the darkness and attacked, tearing into his body with its long, deadly claws. So luckily for the officer in question, oh, he survived the incident, he lived. though he was badly wounded. God His report dang. on the matter, including the ardent claim that he was attacked by a being, quote, made from black smoke, caught the attention of SCP Foundation operatives imagine? embedded in the precinct. They How soon took over the investigation that? and descended on the house, hoping to tag and bag whatever had been behind all these deaths. This would be easier said than done. Sure. While Foundation field agents canvassed the home, they simply walked past the creature multiple times, discounting mm -hmm. it as a mere shadow. After all, it only had these easily identifiable glowing eyes when it was in a retreating position. Right. Even when it entered its physical state, operatives brushing up against it generally dismissed the sensation as hair, clothing, or some other object touching ah. them in the dark. This already bungled so investigation like got even worse mass. when the Foundation decided to introduce high-intensity lights into the equation, hopefully ah. flushing the creature out. This, of course, only caused it to dematerialize and appear elsewhere. Sure. The chase ended in an almost farcical fashion. A cavalcade <laughs> of Foundation agents chasing a cloud of sneering black smoke across yeah. a Mississippi field like a at 2.30 a.m. Thankfully for the human race, the entity was, at the very least, eventually secured and contained. Okay. However, no this wouldn't be the that, last time uh -huh. it was out of containment. During a series of tests with different types of illumination, intending to test SCP-280's reflexes, it disappeared from its chamber. Uh -oh. It seemed almost to sink through the different levels of the illuminated site before coming to rest at the containment chamber holding uh, SCP-1591. This difference. made for a fascinating of, accidental cost test. You see, SCP-1591, oh, to yeah. put it simply, is a unique the sculpture light. of a star that emits an incredibly bright light. Oh. This light will slowly make any being subject to its glow intangible before disappearing I've never, I've never reacted to when this SCP one. That's interesting. When SCP-280 came before SCP-1591, it displayed its eyes, but did not retreat. In fact, it assumed a kneeling position and simply remained before the anomalous sculpture so, until it faded from existence. Intangibility, it then manifested in its own containment chamber weird. several hours later without incident. Huh. All things considered, it went pretty well as yeah. far as containment <laughs> breaches involving deadly Whoops. human hated Thankfully. monsters go. <laughs> because of its ability to demanifest and phase through solid objects, SCP-280 is incredibly difficult to contain, yeah. earning it the dreaded Keter object class. Of course. In order to avoid the risk of demanifestation, SCP-280 is contained in a 5 by 5 meter cell that is perpetually left in a state of total darkness. Mm. No equipment is to be left in the cell unsupervised at any time and any items brought into the cell for testing must be removed when the testing is complete. Right. Any staff members entering the chamber for tests must be equipped with infrared goggles, an infrared ID so strobe, they can see and it? also a strong flashlight to ward the creature off in the case that can it becomes aggressive. Can you see it aggressive. in infrared? If SCP-280 does attempt to attack anyone in the chamber, Hi, all beams. attending staff are instructed to turn on their flashlights and turn the beams against the creature. Right. No aggressive action is permitted, and staff members must remain at least one meter away from SCP-280 at I mean, all times for their own safety. I mean, that seems like an aggressive action. <laughs> and if you suddenly feel eyes. yourself getting a little nervous in an eerily dark room, I'd like you to remember this. The one thing more frightening than seeing eyes in the dark is not seeing them. Oh. Now go and watch another entry from the files <laughs> of Dr. Bob, like SCP-015-IT, right. the Boogeyman, for another terrifying anomaly that you may encounter lurking in the dark. That one was really and good, too. That one was really, really good too. Listen, I'm in the camp of making sure if I ever see glowing eyes in the dark, I'm out, right? First of all, like I said at the beginning, I would never investigate an abandoned home in my adult state of being. When I was a kid, when I was a young whippersnapper, I did some stuff like this when I was um, a teenager, so to speak. Like uh, We were some little vandals. We didn't vandalize anything, but we, we did some stuff. And there was an abandoned house where I lived that we actually explored one night and it was scary. It was scary. Listen, I, I would never do it again. I'm much more responsible adult. I'm also a big chicken when it comes to stuff like that. I'd much rather see content about it than actually do it. But this was a really, really cool SCP. I love when SCP crosses into horror, you know what I mean? Because I love reacting to horror stuff too. And I gotta say, I don't know if his animations got better and his narration got better. But this was an amazing video. I really, really liked it. I hope y'all did too, guys. Again, so glad to be back. Listen, make sure to subscribe to Dr. Bob. The link's gonna be in the description below. Subscribe to me if you like reaction videos too. Thanks so much for watching. As always, this is Zildjian signing off and we'll see you next time.